Today we have a Galaxy S7 Edge with no sound coming from the loudspeaker. So I've gone into a few different applications here. There are no touch tones on the keypad. When you dial out, nothing happens. However, if you make a phone call, you can hear through the earpiece speaker. The microphone works also, so we don't have a major problem. It all seems to be associated with the loudspeaker. If you plug in the headset jack, we can hear everything just fine, which is good news because this shouldn't be too difficult when it comes to the repair. When you have a lack of sound from everywhere, that is a completely different story. So what we're going to do is take a look at where the speaker connects on the inside of the phone. So at these two points are where the connection takes place between the speaker and the motherboard. So the first thing I like to do in this situation is to rule out the speaker as a problem. And in order to do that, what we can do is remove it from the phone, flip it over, and right where there's two contacts are located, just take your power supply or any other 3.8 volt source of power, like a battery with some wires. And as you touch on the connections here, you'll be able to hear whether or not the speaker is making a clicking noise. And when it does, that means we know it's working. Polarity doesn't matter here. There is no positive negative that you have to worry about for that test. Now, when we get the motherboard underneath the microscope and look a little closer, we can probably tell immediately by looking here what is going on. It looks like an inductor has been knocked off of the board. I have no idea how that happened. It could have been from impact when the phone got dropped. It might have been from a repair attempt. There are a number of things that can cause this, but you can easily see there that the circuit is broken. The nice thing here is that the board shows you where everything goes right on the surface. So this is a pretty easy one. What we're gonna have to do is take a donor board because I don't know where to source this particular component. So we're gonna get another Galaxy S7 Edge and let's get these cables out of the way here because one, we need to get this off of our donor and number two, we wanna get an idea of how much heat we need to apply in order to make that happen. And of course, we don't wanna melt anything in the process. So I've worked on a few Galaxy S7 and S8 boards before, but uh, surprisingly, this one took less heat than I expected. So if you're taking something like the PMIC off of a Galaxy S8, you're gonna use a little more heat than you normally would for something like, say, an iPhone. But in this case, I went in with my heat set at the exact same temperature that I normally use for working on something like an iPhone 6 logic board, and I didn't have any problems. So obviously, this is going to depend on how far away your heat is, what your airflow is, uh, what your temperature setting to, the type of nozzle that you have and all that stuff. And that's why I would say that in this situation, just approach this the same way that you would as something like a touch IC repair, and you should have a similar outcome. I didn't have to adjust the temperature whatsoever. In this case, I was using the Quick 861DW set at 385, and I had my airflow at 30, and as you can see, I'm almost right on top of the component itself. And my nozzle, I want to say, is the four millimeter bent tip, so if that helps at all. But again, you know, use your judgment here. What we're looking for, of course, is that the solder will liquefy. We can lift this off. I did not want to use the micro tweezers on this one because these inductors have a tendency of getting melted, that little plastic coating that's on them. So uh, as you can see for this one, all we did was heat it up. Once everything liquefied, we moved it away. Now I am gonna flip this over and try to take some of that old solder off. But for the most part, like I mentioned, that coating that's on the outside of these things like to melt pretty easily. So I wanted to be careful here, not do any damage to it. And really, as long as we've got flux on here and we remove the oxidation, having a small amount of old solder I don't think is going to be uh, a big deal for this one. And of course it's gonna stick to my iron, but you get the idea. We just wanna kinda clean this up a bit, make it nice and smooth. If you wanted to, I suppose you could wick it, but again, as long as we've got flux and sufficient temperature, when we attach this, we shouldn't have to worry about any um, oxidation happening. All right, so now on the original board, we are going to want to remove all of this old solder. And in this case, it actually took off the connection from the inductor itself. So there is some residual material left over. 
uh, which you'll see here in just a minute. First, we're going to come in and apply a little more flux than that. That's not going to be quite enough. There we go, that's looking better. And I'm just going to kind of saturate this because when these footings get attached to the board, there is obviously a risk of pulling the entire pad off. So I want to get this thing nice and coated with some leaded solder and then we'll come in and wick. Hopefully everything will come off at once. A little more flux. And you can see those little pieces just kind of falling off at this point. All right, so once we have that cleaned up, we'll go in and tin these pads. So a little fresh flux. All right, so let's slide this guy down just a hair. You can see it's kind of floating around on the flux. You're gonna set right there and we'll just kind of hold it in place for a second until it gets semi-attached and from here this thing should kind of pull itself into position just keep an eye on the solder and once that liquefies we will be ready to go you can see it just kind of slide in there I gave it a little nudge and we should be good to go there so let's clean this up and hopefully we should have a working loudspeaker at this point All right, so we have a notification tone. As you can hear when I press on the buttons, we've got the clicking noise. I did go through and play some videos and other media, and everything is working again. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one, and thanks for watching.